Know you've been a good friend And that's in the thick and thin Hi everyone, welcome to A Proverbs Home. I hope you're all having a great day. And hello to all my new subscribers that had just subscribed. Thank you for joining. I am so excited to get to know you. And I hope you get to know other friends down in the comment area. I'm very blessed that they are my friends. And I am so happy that I can get to call you my friend. We definitely try to keep this channel drama free. We share our opinions, but we respect others' opinions. And today is one of those days that I want to talk about impulse versus prepping. And I think a lot of people are getting that confused and it kind of frustrates them because they're wondering, okay, where do I start? You know, they're hearing all these things that are going on and they're like, okay, where do I start? What do I have to buy? And to be honest with you, there are many people that either are not financially able to go out and buy just a bunch, you know, a whole load of groceries. They have to watch their money, they're paying bills, and they have to watch their money. So I'm gonna talk today about prepping the simple way. Doing it simply, doing it wisely. I think a big problem in prepping, and this is one of the mistakes I made, first mistake that I made was overbuying things. Overbuying food, overbuying canned food, and not really saying, okay, what's gonna work for my family when I first started prepping? You know, if your family doesn't eat beans, it makes no sense to prep 10 can of beans or canning beans and no one's gonna eat it, and then it has to go out or you're the one, only one that's eating beans. Now there's nothing wrong to prep a couple of you know, beans or have a couple of cans of beans put away in your pantry that's going to be long term that you can have it just in case. So there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're buying over buying and buying cases of beans and then you're wondering what you're going to do with all of it, that may not be good. So I think that we have to be very careful and spending and going out and impulsively buying groceries, impulsively getting things out of fear out of being afraid because we heard something on the news. Now, let me make this disclaimer. It's very important when you hear something to take that, to research it. A lot of people, they kind of blow things off and then when something comes, when then when something happens, we're like, oh, I should have listened, I should have prepped. Another thing is inventory. When I first started prepping, I never did inventory. So that means I would buy my canned goods, I would buy my box goods or whatever it was, and then I would forget it was there. It's kind of like out of sight, out of mind, right? It's almost like you have to have a love affair with your food. You ever dated somebody way in your past, way, way back when you were in high school, and it was kind of like when they weren't around, you really didn't think about them? You know, so it's kind of like a love affair, right? When you fall in love, you're constantly thinking about the people you love, and you're thinking about your family members, well, prepping is kind of like that. Not exactly. You don't want to constantly be thinking about food either. But you have to make sure you're doing your inventory. Out of sight, out of mind. That means if you don't see it, you forget it's there. And then you end up having to throw it away and you're wasting so much food. And I think another mistake that people make is going food shopping and not eating before they leave the house. That is really hard. It doesn't matter what time of the day you're gonna go food shopping. Have a little snack. Maybe some trail mix in your purse. You know, maybe a 7-Up or something that you can drink on your way there or eat something in your home, eat lunch, or is it, if it's in the evening time, try to be some, bring something along. Why do I say this? I know it sounds like a cliche and a lot of people say it, but it's not a cliche and it's very true. Because when you're hungry, you're more liable to go into the store and buy junk foods. But I think when you go on a full stomach, you've already eaten, you're going to only buy the things you're going to the store for. So I think that's a mistake a lot of people make. I know I have done it. I know I've seen family members do it. Is go into the store eat, and purchase things you're going to eat along the way when you go home. <laughs> We've done that. We'll get the cookies. We love doing that during Christmas. I'm not saying that we have to be a Grinch and we can't 
get a pack of cookies and enjoy them with everybody in the car, you know, and try a new snack that Aldi has for the Christmas time. Nothing is wrong with that. But if you're really trying to save your money, I think impulsively going into a store without making sure you already ate and you're going to buy what you need and impulsively just taking things off the shelf can cause you to just spend money you don't need to spend. Another thing is the packaging. A lot of times people buy groceries or they buy something new because the packaging is so pretty. Have you ever fell for that? I have. Especially now the fall is here, everything is pumpkin spice. But to me, not everything that's pumpkin spice tastes good. Not everything that, I love pumpkin spice coffee and stuff like that, but not everything that's pumpkin spice really tastes good. So I think we need to be really careful about packaging. Just because you see a packaging doesn't mean that that's better than something that's generic. You may be able to buy something generic that tastes just as good as the main brand. So I think researching and seeing the products that you like that are similar to the name brand products and doing that and just making sure when you go in the store, you're not just impulsively buying something because it's name brand. Sometimes you'd be surprised if you look at the ingredients on another product is the same ingredients that the name brand products have, just like our medicine. There's many medicines that are name brand, but when you look at the generic ones, they have the same ingredients. Same ingredients. We are a family of snackers. We like to have our snacks. We like to have our chips, um, our cakes, our different things. Some families do not snack. We are snackers. We do like it. We like to bake. That is the way we are. However, I have stopped buying boxes of Twinkies, of Ho-Ho's, of cupcakes. I stopped doing that. I haven't done that in a very, very long time. Once in a while, if I'm at the Dollar Tree and they have like a box of four brownies or something that my husband could take to work, I might pick one of those up. That's once in a while. However, I have learned that I can bake my own snacks at home. So any kind of cake mix and make your cupcakes at home put half of the batter, freeze it. There's ways you can do that. So you could freeze half of the batter, make about six cupcakes, depending on the size of your family. And you have cupcakes for during the week and you just bake them yourself or you could just bake them with the flour you have. So that is great, just baking. So I've learned to use my flour or my cake mixes to make snacks. I do not spend six, seven dollars on a box of Ho-Ho's anymore. Look up a good recipe and I guarantee your family's probably going to like it a lot better. I love to make muffins. That's one of the things we like to snack on. So I make sure that I have my baking cups and they're full. I find them on discount, on clearance. When I go to the Ben and Dent, I look for cupcake um, holders because usually they're like 10 cents for a whole pack. And I do pick them up and I like having them because I'm constantly making muffins. It's a very easy snack. It's also if you make granola in your house, which is a lot cheaper than buying chips. I love, part of prepping is picking up a little extra. So if you're at the store, let's say you're buying tomatoes or you're buying corn or something like that, not everybody cans. There are people that can tomatoes and do that. We like to can, we're just getting into the canning thing and we're beginning to enjoy it. But there are people that have been canning for years and they're great at it, but not everybody can. So I'm not one of those people that like to can. When you go grocery shopping, and let's say you're supposed to pick up four cans of diced tomatoes for the whole month. Let's just use that as an example. Pick up two extra ones and put those away. And that's how you start prepping. Don't go pick up 10 and then you're like, well, you know, I don't know. We're not going to use tomatoes that much. You have too much of it and stuff like that. The only thing I would say with having too much, you can always give to another family that's in need. Donate to your community pantry. There's things you can do like that. But I am just talking about if you're trying to conserve money, pick up an extra can or an extra two cans. And you have them. Two cans, not two can the bird. Two cans. I don't know. That's my sense of humor. And the meat is so expensive. I mean, I'm just like, wow. But what I do is I buy it and I cut it in fours. If I buy a pound of ground beef, 
I always separate it, my husband and I do. We put it in Ziploc bags, we freeze it, and we have meat for chili. And then you can make a big pot of chili and you can put freeze chili in your fridge. Pulse of buying can get us in trouble. If I'm out somewhere and I see something that you know has this nice packaging, I think, oh, I really need that when I really don't. I leave it on the shelf, I go do my shopping, and then if I still feel like I really want it and I feel it's gonna benefit us, I will go back and get it. And I will tell you, 99% of the time, I don't go back. That's a great way to not impulsively prep, not impulsively buy. I think that it's important that we prep. I think um, having the things you need as far as medicines, ibuprofen, band-aids, all those things are important for you to have toothbrushes, toothpaste, toilet paper, for your family and just have those little extras detergent those little extras in case you're going to need them however I think sometimes we need to take a deep breath we need to thank God for what we do have start doing it slowly start getting those things in if don't don't wait till there's an incident and then you're like oh I have nothing you know I spend it on the movies or I spent it impulsively buying DVDs that I really don't need. You know, this is just a thought. Everybody lives their life according to where they feel, right? But God wants us to use wisdom in the way we live our life, to spend wisely. There's this verse I love and it says, consider the ant, O oh you slugger, and consider its ways and be wise. That means all summer, fall, the ant is storing up food for the winter. And I think we need to consider the ways of the ant. And I think, you know, prepping, having that food where you're not going out all, every single week, every paycheck, having to buy groceries. There's been things I have bought out of being impulsive and then realize I really didn't want that or didn't look right on me. You know how it is, ladies. Why did I bring that home? Let's have the things that we need in our home. If you're a new, somebody new to prepping and it's really good, I don't want to prep anymore and it's getting you on your nerves because you don't want to ever hear about prepping I know many people like that take a deep breath slowly get the things you need slowly you have a pantry you have a small pantry you have a container somewhere that you could slowly put things in there for your family God bless you everyone I hope you enjoyed this video I hope it might have helped you and inspired you. I hope you everybody has a, a great friend. day and a great and day and a great morning whenever it is you're watching this video. And, and I'll talk to you in the next video.